Illustrative Math, Algebra 2, Lesson 7.3 is called Randomness in Groups. Our goal today is I recognize that the way I choose a sample matters and that random samples have less bias. Okay, our warm-up. Reporter wants to know how people feel about the governor of her state. She decides to ask 100 people their opinions and thinks of several ways to ask the 100 people. For each method, she explains the benefits and drawbacks. For each method, explain the benefits and drawbacks, then choose the method for selecting 100 people that would best represent the population of the state. All right, so first one, go to the capital city and find 100 people interested in politics to respond to the survey. All right, so what are, we, what are the drawbacks? Um, so people in the capital city might be more informed and interested in the actions of the governor. So their opinion might be more likely to be based on actual information. Uh, people in the capital city might be more similar in their political leanings than people throughout the state. This really is not a random sample of the entire state. Bottom line, um, if you wanna get a sample of the whole state, you can't just interview people in one part of the state. So that would be um, not a good representation. Um, two, ask the 100 most politically influential people in the state to respond to the survey. All right, well, the most politically influential people probably have strong opinions and ways to act on them, but they may not represent the general population of the state. Okay, so, you know, you're not going to get the same opinion from someone that is politically influential uh, versus, you know, your common common citizen. Three, obtain census data for the state and select 100 people from the list to survey using a random process. I think this is probably the best method since the people chosen are most likely to represent the people in the state as a whole. Um, with random selection, the reporter will not be able to include specific groups and the sample may miss some smaller groups with with strong opinions, but each person in the sample has an equal chance of being selected. So you pick 100 people, you get the census from the state, so you get everybody's name, address, phone number, whatever, and you just pick 100 people randomly. And I'm sure you're gonna get people from every part of the state. Well, maybe not, because it's only 100. Depends how big the state is. But, you know, obviously the more people you choose, the better representation it would be. 100 is not really that many people um, in comparison to like the size of a state, which usually has millions. So, um, four, ask 50 registered voters who voted for the governor and 50 registered voters who did not vote for the governor to respond to the survey. Um, this will, this method will force opposing viewpoints to be included, but does not include anyone who is not a registered voter. Um, I guess you could compare and contrast people who voted for him. Do they still like him? People who didn't vote for him, did their opinion change? Um, things like that. But it's not going to be a good random sample of the state's opinion at that moment. All right. So here's what's going to happen here. Um, if you were in class, we would divide the class into two separate groups. And I would like say, okay, left side of the classroom, you're group one. Right side of the classroom, you're group two. And what I would do is I'd say, okay, group one, I'm going to... I want, I'm going to delete this box and you have to memorize as many words as you can in three seconds. So ready, set, go. All right. So there it is. Okay. So now, um, you know, I'd say, okay, write down as many words as you can. All right. And then we go to group two, it'd be the other half, the right side of the classroom. And I'd say, all right, ready. You're going to have three seconds, memorize as many words as you can while the other group claps and makes noise. Okay. So ready, go. Oh, no, hold on. I lied. Ready, go. All right. So the idea there is, you know, we're trying to see if, 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 um, there's evidence right here. It says, look at the data and ask, is there evidence to suggest one of the conditions made the words easier to recall? All right. So it would probably not be enough to conclude there's causation. What you what, you, what probably would happen is you're, you're you're thinking here that group one and group two, um, you know, your initial thought is group one would be able to memorize more because they could focus. Group two would be a little more distracted. 
but um, probably not going to have, I mean, it's not going to be off by a ton and you really don't have a giant sample space. So, you know, you only have like whatever many people are in your class, like 20 seconds or so. So here's what we're really looking at. How can this be improved? So I think using a random process to divide the class up rather than just say left side, right side, maybe, um, you know, everybody pulls a number out of a, out of a bag or something. Um, and then you'd want to use the same list because, you know, these are different words. Um, so, you know, you just, you never know, um, you know, is, is one list have harder words to remember? Um, things like that. So you're going to want to use the same list, maybe separate the groups too, because, you know, the first group might get like a practice shot. Like I know they're not, they're going to have different words, but they're practicing how to memorize it. So things like that would make that experiment much better. All right. Next thing, a research group interested in comparing the effect of different types of music on short-term memory gathers 200 volunteers for a study. One group will listen to a hip hop music playlist while trying to memorize a list of 20 words. A second group will listen to a playlist of orchestral music while trying to memorize the list of 20 words. After break, the number of words recalled correctly by each individual is measured and the results for the two groups are compared. Is this an experimental study or an observational study? Explain your reasoning. All right, this is an experimental study since the researchers are investigating the effect of type of music on the ability to memorize words, okay? They're, they're actually doing the experiment. They're not just observing. Which group do you hypothesize will recall more words? Explain your reasoning. Um, you know, there's really, I mean, it's just kind of a wild guess here, but I just wrote a couple possible scenarios. I would, I have no idea. There might not be any, um, there might not be any logical reason. They might, you know, not have one group more than the other, but I just put for orchestral music, you might say, cause it's calming and relaxing. That could help while hip hop is usually loud and fast, which could be distracting. So maybe like the orchestral music might relax the person. Now, on the other hand, if you want to say hip hop, you could say this sound is usually upbeat and it could energize a person while the orchestral music could make the person tired. These are just possible situations. If you have any other possible scenarios, um, you know, that, that would be fine too. So here are some options for splitting the volunteers into groups. Which method will best address the, the intention of the study? Explain your reasoning. So A, divide groups based on the preferred music style. I don't think that's a good random sample um you're going to get people that like classical you know you, you just if we're if we're trying to address the question of if if a type of music helps people memorize words you, you don't want to group them based on their preferred music um b divide groups based on their age youngest 100 listen to hip-hop music and the older 100 listen to orchestral music again we're we're not doing a random sample there so that would be we could get skewed data. C, divide groups based on the order in which they came in to do the study. First 100 listen to hip hop, next 100 listen to orchestral music. Not bad, not a bad idea there. Um, it is more random than the other ones where you'll have subgroups. Um, and then D is truly random. Write all the volunteer names on slips of paper, put them in a jar and shake it, then draw out 100 slips. These will listen to hip hop, Playlist while others will listen to orchestra. I think D is probably the best since it is truly random and not will give us biased results. All right, the next thing here, we got this, this little graphic over here on the right, a bunch of little, little grids of squares. Company offers solar power systems made up of one square meter cells arranged into rectangles. They use the designs for their first 100 customers to list the ways people arrange the cells. They are interested in investigating this question. What is the mean area of the rectangles created by our customers? Collect a sample of five rectangles using the methods here. All right, let's start with A. Look quickly at the chart and select five rectangles by their numbers. Record the numbers of the rectangles you choose. Okay, I'm going to just kind of randomly touch five of these. Okay. So I got 86, 78, 66, 74, and 54. I just randomly took those. So look quickly at the chart. It's like five rectangles by their numbers. Record the numbers 
of the rectangles you chose, okay? So I had, what I have? I had 54, 66, 74, 78, 86. Okay, select a number between 1 and 95. Use that number in the next four numbers for another sample of five rectangles. For example, if you select eight, then you choose eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All right, I'm going to go with 32. So then I'd have 33, 34, 35, 36. Look closer at the rectangles and choose your five favorite. Record the numbers of the, ooh, my five favorite. All right, I'm going to try to pick ones that are, that are in squares. I like squares. Squares are better. Um, I like them. They're more, they're, they're, they are rectangles, but they're even more specific. So I'm going to choose only squares. So I'm going 18. I guess a one by one is a square. I'm going to choose 20. 15 is a two by two. Any four by fours? Yeah. 30. Now let's go 42. 42 is a four by four. And that's as big as it goes. So I'll do another four by four. I'll go with 61. Use the random number generator to select five numbers between one and a hundred. Okay. I have one over here. I'm, I'm using it on my phone. So, all right. First one is 30. Next one is 83. Next random number, 07. Next one, 68. And the next one, 21. All right, for each method, find the mean area of the rectangles in the sample. Okay, so for, for A, you have to add up the number of rectangles and divide by five. Okay, so got my calculator here. So these are the ones I already have them circled. So it looks like here I'm going to have six plus. Five plus 16 plus 3 plus 8. 38 divided by 5 gives me 7.6. Okay. All right, so next one is 32 through... 36 right here. So let's see here. 16 plus 5 plus 12 plus 10 plus 4. 47 divided by 5 is 9.4. Let's go to C. All right, um, so I had 18, so that was 9, 20, that's 1, 15, that's 4, 42 is 16, and then 61 is 16 as well. So I got 46 divided by 5 is 9.2. And let's go to D. Thirty. That would be ten. Eighty-three is six. Seven is one. 68 is 4, and 21 is 1. So I got 22 divided by 5 is 4.4. So total wide range there, we got 9.4, 4.4. All right, so which method do you think is best for estimating the mean area for the entire population? Um. I mean, I don't know what the actual answer is. We'd have to add these all up and divide by 100. But um, I definitely would say 
and my data didn't work out very well with the because this is like the lowest of them all for my uh, random number. But I would still say D is the best because it is truly random. Um, you know, I guess A problem with A is if I just look so quickly, like when I chose these numbers, I kind of chose them all in the same spot. Whereas like if you look here down at the top, bottom it's more of the numbers that have one and up top it's kind of like bigger rectangles over here so if i kind of look in this area over here i'm going to pick bigger ones whereas if i look over here i'm going to get smaller so it kind of depends on where you are so i'd say you know like a probably isn't very good um same with b b is kind of all in the same area so b is not good um, this one is not random at all. You're just choosing your five favorites. So honestly, this is the best one right there, D. Okay. All right. So why is it important to use random selection when selecting a sample to study? All right. Using a random selection, get samples. Me samples means that every item in the population has an equal chance of being selected for the sample. Right, you won't get any skewed data. Um, it's supposed to represent the whole group. What's an example of selecting a random, selecting a sample without using random selection? What are the drawbacks of using a sample selected this way? So random example, if I wanna know um, who people vote for for the 11th grade student council, I might just sample my friends. The drawback is that my friends might not represent the whole 11th grade it might be more likely to vote for the same person as me since they are my friends. Okay, you want to definitely truly do random random um, surveys there. All right, Kieran has a group of 50 people that he's going to study in an experimental study. He needs them to sign a form to participate. He creates two groups of 25 people. The first group consists of the first 25 people who turned in the signed form. The second group consists of the other 25 people who signed the form. Are there any potential problems with Kieran's study? Explain your reasoning. So I said, yes, Kieran went through the effort of getting 50 participants, but when we made his groups, he did not choose them randomly. This could be a problem because maybe the first 25 people to sign the form have a different personality or are different in some other way from the other 25 people. By using a random selection, Kieran could have avoided this issue. You know, maybe the, the first 25 people um, you know, they, they, they turn in their paper right away. They're a little bit more um, disciplined or, you know, they, they, they aren't procrastinators or things like that, whatever it could be. Um, it's just not technically random. Why is it important to randomly assign people to groups in an experimental study? Using a random process to create the groups helps reduce the likelihood of grouping subjects into groups that may differ, I should have said differ, differ on some characteristics, okay? You don't want your data to be misleading. All right, so back to our goal. I recognize that the way I choose a sample matters and that random samples have less bias. I think we've kind of addressed that today. All right, last question on our cool down. Why is it important to separate, separate experimental groups by a random process? Using a random process to create the groups helps reduce the likelihood of grouping subjects into groups that may differ on some characteristic that is related to the response, okay? Why is it important to select samples from a population using random selection? Again, using random selection to select samples ensures that all individuals in the population have an equal chance of being selected. As a result, we expect the sample group is likely to be representative of the population, okay? You need random sample groups to really get a good a good idea of what you're trying to find. And the bigger your group, the better it is. Okay, it's obviously always not feasible to um, pull everybody um, that you're trying to get the data for, but the bigger, the better. All right, thanks for watching this video. Hope you hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.